know how important it is to build an army um, around what you want to defend, y'all in the wrong place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up Brother Kalanji. I want y'all to give him a Chicago hand and show him how greatly appreciated it is. Peace. How y'all feeling? Right. Mayor Marcus is a legend. I've been knowing him for going on 15 years. That's a bad dude. Don't let that smooth taste food. Um, I'm really, really honored to be here in Chicago today. This is my first time speaking in Chicago since, for in about 11 years, since 2001. You know, so, um, you know, I, I know I, I look like a little boy or whatever, so that tells you that we've been doing this for a few minutes. You know, um, and like I said, I'm very grateful, and I'm grateful to be sharing the stage with my brother Marcus because of the fact that I know that he's consistent. My voice is messed up. Um, I flew into Chicago two days ago, and um, I thought Atlanta had bad weather. Y'all off the hook. You know what I mean? One day, I feel like you want to put on some Speedos. I don't wear Speedos. And then the next day, <laughs> feel like you got to put on, like, four jackets. So, you know, I got caught up in the mix. So, you know, but it's going to be all right. Can y'all hear me pretty good? Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so I've been knowing Marcus for quite a while. And, um, you know, definitely love his school. You know, it's a powerful thing. It's very necessary. Um, for those of you who were here a little earlier, there was a, uh, a trailer showing. That's a film we have coming out called Organizing is the New Cool. And it's documenting some of our work and also the work of uh, many folks who came before us. Folks who worked with Honorable Marcus Mosaic Garvey, folks who were comrades with El Hajman Shabazz Malcolm X. Um, we have folks like the Last Poets. We have all types of different ground workers, cultural workers, freedom fighters like Daruba Ben Wahad. We have uh, the babies, you know, we have a little bit of everything. We have actor Tommy Ford talking about, you know, um, the whole Willie Lynch situation. You know, the one thing we like to do is we like to be practical because of the fact that, um, you know, we've heard eight million lectures. We, you can go on YouTube and see wherever you want. You know what I mean? We've heard all these different things about what we need to do. And um, it's not too often we talk about how to do it. You understand what I'm saying? Oftentimes we get folks who are entertainers. You know, with the whole YouTube phenomenon and the, the, the whole Facebook thing, you know, you can just become an instant revolutionary. You just log on. You know, say some crazy stuff, throw some red, black, and green on, you know, talk about how many guns you got and all that stupid stuff, you know, beef with a couple other folks online, log off, and then lead some other people to prison. You know what I mean? Because most of the times, you know, that's what we call that new counterinsurgency program. What folks don't realize is the internet was created by the military as a communications piece. You know, so when you talk about you think they listen to you, I think they enter my account. What account do you have? You plugged into their system, so of course they're listening to you. You know? But we get online and we get insane. We we friend whoever sound the roughest, toughest, whatever. And then we see them in Chicago and they look like some little nerds, you know what I mean? Or some little, you know, offbeat pimps or something like that. And you realize that they're not really who they say they are. They're not on the front line as Marcus Magazine would say. You know what I mean? In fact, most of them won't bust the Concord grape in a fruit fight. You know what I'm saying? But that's neither here nor there. Um, I want to give a little disclaimer. I'm not going to stand before you and act like I'm some great man and I'm going to come with some uh, phenomenal information that you've never heard before because all of that is BS. I might spark something in you that's already in you. You know what I'm saying? might remind you of something that you might already know. You know what I mean? Or I might give you something to add on. Everything that I'm given is stuff that I learned from my elders, my OGs, so on and so forth. So I'm not claiming anything. You know what I mean? So I want to get that clear before you know, sometimes you go places and folks want to debate you. Well, I feel like blah, blah. I don't care how you feel. We're here to talk about what we're doing. You know what I mean? And if what you got to offer is, is better than what we're talking about, then present it to us so we can utilize it. You know what I'm saying? Because when it comes to being a part of war, it's not about ego. It's not about how many Facebook likes you get, how many thumbs up you get. It's not about who think your profile picture is cute, any of that type of nonsense. You understand what I'm saying? 
as our good brother Chairman Fred would say, um, we got no difference between a comrade and a friend, you know? And we get caught out if folks don't look like we look or talk like we talk. I'm so happy to be in here right now because it's not the everyday so-called conscious crowd. I don't consider myself a part of the conscious community. You know what I'm saying? Because it separates you out the gate. You know what I mean? You gotta throw these labels on. You gotta have locks or a bald head. You gotta be have a natural. You know what I'm saying? And as our brother H. Rap Brown, Imam Jamil Alameen, formerly H. Rap Brown, would say, you know, you got um, folks with uh, perm head, excuse me, perm minds and natural hair beats. You know what I'm saying? So we got a lot of folks that's real natural on the outside, but on the inside, they got more flaws than, you know what I mean, some of them folks down the street. You know, so we don't separate ourselves because of the fact that it's about the people. And when we're talking about a people's army, the people's army can't exist without the people, right? If everybody were just scholars and, you know, uh, wore flip-flops and walk around with staffs and vegan lollipops and all of that, then we would have no reason to even be here, right? But that's not the case. Some of our greatest scholars might eat pork like Dr. Ben. You understand what I'm saying? Some of them might have a weave down their back and around the corner. But that doesn't say anything to their character. You understand what I'm saying? It's not about the content. Excuse me, it's not about the labels, it's about the content. It's not about what it looked like, it's what it is, right? We good? I don't want to offend nobody because I'm known to be very offensive. <laughs> but I'm in Chicago and I know y'all kind of gangster. <laughs> That's why I'm glad I'm down with all y'all. So start man, man. Be man. Anyway, um, first of all, give it up for the babies, man, that came up here and did what they did. <laughs> that right there is powerful. How many of y'all knew that map that they was busting out? Hands up. Okay, I'm glad y'all ain't lying because you know, I'll, I'll get, go get Marcus and tell him, you know, let's do a quick test real quick. Um, when we're talking about a people's army, you know, writing, writing a book, right? You know, we purposely put a picture of some sisters, you know, with some, with some uh, equipment on the cover. And we purposely, you know, had the little, you know, design because we wanted it to look rough and tough and all that type stuff. Because we feel that most of the people that would be looking to pick it up would be people that would need it most. Folks who think that the first thing you got to do is grab a gun to be a part of revolution hasn't quite gotten the memo and the message, right? right. The first thing is about education, right? Mm -hmm. Not just education on this level, which is very necessary because like, like the brother said, you can't read, you can't write. You can't comprehend. Right. But political education. There's rules to every game, right? Everything in the universe, there's rules that apply whether you know them or you see them or not, right? But unfortunately, like I said, we live in an instant, quick, grit, day, state of mind and date and time and all of that. You know, so our children don't know what a real telephone looks like. They didn't know that a cell phone came out like 10 years ago, we began to start getting cell phones. They don't know what a pay phone is, it's archaic. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so a lot of this stuff is obsolete. They don't know what a cassette player is, let alone an eight track that. You know? So the thing is, you know, technology's moving fast, and the quicker technology moves, the dumber we're getting. <coughs> because many of our children aren't going to the libraries anymore. Many of our children aren't reading books anymore. They get the information off of the internet and whatever the dummy on the other end wants you to believe. That's what the business is, right? And that's part of the reason why we're in the same situation we're in right now, right? Okay, so when we talk about people's army, right? The first thing that we have to work on, because I feel like many of our folks kind of did this thing backwards. We, we look at the 60s as if it was the start of revolution, and we know that it's not, right? We know that that's part of our liberation struggle. It's an ongoing process, so on and so forth, right? We know that real revolution hasn't begun yet because of the fact that we're not afraid to walk up and down the street. There's no real bullets flying over our heads. We're not ducking and diving. We're still looking fly right now, right? Yeah. We're still cool. Ain't no, you know, I'm a revolutionary, blah, blah, blah. 
How can you tell a revolutionary when you see him? You can't. You can't. There's no Angela Davis t-shirt on a revolutionary. There's no uh, Asada Shakur tattoo on their face. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's not how it goes. You want to be kind of inconspicuous because of the fact that you know that your enemy is at war with you. And our enemy is at war with us regardless of whether we accept it or not. It don't even matter. We might not be at war, but we damn sure in war. Yes, sir. Right? So no matter how we look at it, chase it up, whatever. So we start with our family. And I said we do it, did it backwards because many of us, including myself, we thought that we was just going to go out, we was going to do what we got to do, get prepped up, get ready, whatever. You know, I'm going to be back, blah, blah, blah. The family's still going to be sitting there waiting for you to get home. When in the real family now moved on, you sitting there looking crazy now, right? And your family's supposed to be your first line of defense, right? So if your household, if that's not tight, then we have a problem, right? right. Now, nothing's going to be perfect because of the fact that we Africans living in America and we've been through it, right? So one out of two of us in the household going to be crazy, maybe two of us, maybe two out of two. We're going to have issues, we're going to have problems, so on and so forth. We evolve, you know what I mean? You might have met me and, you know, we met at the club, whatever, so on and so forth. Somebody turned me on to a book or I caught a bid. Now, all of a sudden, I want you to roll how I roll, right? Now, you was in the strip club dancing. I was throwing money at you. It was cool. Now, all of a sudden, I got righteous or whatever, you know. Look here, man, you know I don't eat this no more. I don't eat that no more. I'm throwing this away, blah, blah, blah. You got to do what I tell you to do. And we have what? Another broken household, right? Right? We don't like to talk about this because of the fact it is too real. It's not entertaining. It don't make us feel good, right? But we have to go to the root of the problems in order for us to solve the problems, correct? Yes, sir. I feel kind of funny with this thing right here. I'm going to tell you all, um, just for the record, I'm not Al Sharpton's folks. Um, I don't wear wires. Uh, oh, the, the cameraman asked me to um, put this on just in case I see some of you all looking at me like I'm in 10 or whatever. That ain't, that ain't how we get down. Just want to clarify that so we don't have no problems. Um, yeah, so we start at home or whatever, and we begin with the babies. We start to train them because of the fact that their minds are most impressionable, right? They can, you can put in all this information, especially before age five, we know all that, and get them the right, get them moving the right way, so on and so forth. We teach them how to eat the right food, not just physically, but mentally, spiritually, so on and so forth, right? So with that, we know that, okay, boom, at least our babies know what time it is. Beyond that, we say, okay, boom. Who do we call when it's a problem? Because many of us in the so-called conscious community, revolutionary community, whatever we choose to call it, the first time something go down, the first number we dialing is 911. Flavor Flav, as retarded as he is, told y'all back in the day that 911 is a joke, right? <laughs> That's the realest thing he ever said, right? He didn't have to listen to nothing else he said. He said 911 was a joke. If Flavor said it was a joke, <laughs> you know what it is to us, right? So. 911's a joke, so we got to say, okay, boom, what's the alternative solutions? Because of the fact that you're saying, okay, look, I'm a single parent, I'm at home, you know what I mean? I'm getting beat on, so on and so forth. Who am I supposed to call? I call the conscious communities, and these Negroes, well, that's brother so-and-so, so, you know, with sister, you know, just, you know, blah, blah, blah. Why? Because there's no accountability, right? There's no responsibility. There's no protocol as to how we do things. We didn't lay anything out before we start putting it together, right? So now we say, okay, boom. How do we deal with that? The first thing we got to do is we got to begin to train. And when we train, we train in African martial arts. My um, instructor name is uh, uh, Balagoon, and he's actually from here. And um, he's in Atlanta. He teaches a art called Egbe Ogun. And if our sisters are doing push-ups, they do it the way the brothers are doing it. If the babies are doing push-ups, they do it the way I'm doing it. It's not no, we got to do some girl push-ups and all that type stuff. Because when the police roll up on you, they don't care about you being no girl. You're a nigga to them. And they're going to beat you. And they're going to do whatever it is they got to do. Right? right? So you want to train so even when you get with this next brother or sister, because, you know, brothers get beat down too by the women. You know what I'm saying? You know, it happens. 
when you get with them, you want to make sure that everything's correct. You want to make sure, like, look, you know, boom, I'm going to respect you. This is how we roll, so on and so forth. You like your eye, I like mine, good. Let's keep it that way. You understand what I'm saying? We want to make sure that we're training physically, right? We want to make sure our babies are training physically. So when these pigs come to kick in the door, the babies aren't going to open the door and say, well, you know, it's officer friendly out here. Ain't no officer friendly. The disservice that we do to our children is not teaching our children out the gate who our enemy is. Right? I know, you know, well, you know, I got such and such, you know, she my white friend, she cool, whatever, you know, blah, 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 she understands. You know, and such and such, you know, he worked on the Free Mumia campaign or the Troy Davis campaign, so he cool. He's still white, and his agenda is not the same agenda that you have, and we got to be clear on that. And whenever we get with these folks, and I'm all for coalition bill, I build on with different coalitions for different campaigns. But whenever we get with these folks, their agenda is still their agenda. At the end of the day, it's their way or the highway. They don't care nothing about no Africa, none of that type of stuff you're talking about. They don't care about your babies at the end of the day. They care about what their platform and program is. So we got to teach our babies who the enemy is. And that goes beyond just the white man being the devil. Let me say that as well. Because we get all cuckoo and we think that only white folks are our enemy right now. Right? When in reality... We have more problems with black folks than we do white folks. Because we already know what the white folks are capable of. But, you know, like I said, we see the, the nice natural garb and everything. It's all good. So we let our garbs down. So we say, okay, boom. How do we spot black enemies? The main thing we know is the more indoctrinated we get into this system, the more insane you become. The more you begin to believe that their pain is your pain, the more mental illness you have, right? The more you begin to believe when white lives are, when you're mourning the 20 children who were killed in Connecticut, but you forget about the 500 that have murdered here in Chicago, okay? And I'm sure blood has been spilt right on this avenue, right on this street right here. Now, am I saying to you that we should not be sensitive towards human lives? Of course I'm not saying that. That's the most ridiculous thing because we're African people. And in us, we have, you know, and part of our detriment is, is our sensitivity, right? We can't do what they do because we're not built like that. That's why we're in this condition we're in right now because of the fact that we're not built like that. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So their lives mean more to even us than it mean to them. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all homeboy, Barack Obama. I know y'all ain't gonna like this, but I don't care. I ain't heard him say nothing about what's going on in Chicago. I ain't heard a peep. You? Y'all heard something? What'd he say? What'd he say? It's a shame? He just mentioned Okay, did he stop through here? Did he come to one of the memorials? Oh, okay. He didn't drive down the street, throw no dollars in the air, nothing. Right. Okay. And he mentioned the thing about Trayvon Martin. He said, you know, he looks like my son, okay, whoopie do. What are we going to do about this situation? Okay, so we train our babies because of the fact that we don't want our, our babies that's coming up to be one of these victims. Now, am I blaming all the murders going on in Chicago on the white man? No. Probably. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the reality is, the reality is we have to be accountable for our own actions, right? And the reality is, as Malcolm said, we don't call a man brother until he operates like one, okay? We think that because a complexion is the same as ours or darker, then that means we the same, okay? Black faces in high places ain't never got us nowhere. Wilson B. Good in Philadelphia dropped a bomb on men, women, and children on the Moo family, right? right. Barack Obama's bombing Africa right now, right? So that don't mean nothing in the grand scheme of things. In fact, the blacker they are and the more successful they get, they blacker they don't become. They lose their blackness. Right. They become Calabasian or whatever your boy uh, Tiger Woods was. You know what I'm saying? Barack becomes anything else. His grandmother blacker than midnight. But he ain't African. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, we become the more indoctrinated in this system, the more insane we become. So we got to say, okay, boom. How do we teach our babies to defend themselves? 
Yes, we gotta train them physically. Yes, we gotta train them mentally. Yes, we gotta train them spiritually. But at the same time, we gotta teach them not to deal with certain aspects. We gotta have them in these independent home, independent schools. If you don't can't afford independent school, then we have to homeschool. It's not a foreign concept. America makes you think that it's a foreign concept to say no to vaccination, to say no to, you know, being a part of their system. Even in your own family members, they look at you like you're insane. My son, his, uh, his great aunt, we were at her house a couple days ago, and he has locks. And she said, uh, I think he wants his hair cut. <laughs> My son is three, and she, think, she thinks she he wants his hair cut. She he yeah, she thinks he did that. I live with him every day. You psychic. Look, right. he wants his hair cut. I don't care what he wants because he can't make his decisions right now. Right. Okay? So we're going to teach our children why it's important to be African. You understand what I'm saying? Why it's a great thing to be who you are naturally. Why you don't have to be Tommy Hill figured out. You know what I'm saying? Why you can still be fly even if you don't match. You understand what I'm saying? See, we got to stop following their codes, their laws, their rules, because they're sending us straight to hell. Right? And we'll be the losers waiting for some afterlife when they enjoy the fruits of our labor in this life. You understand what I'm saying? They're some cold characters, ain't they? And we worse than them because we, we let them, you know, we follow them. Okay? Now, but you may say, okay, boom, well, you know, it's the murders on the street and so on and so forth. I touched on that. I bounced around when I speak. Y'all cool with that? Yeah. All right. Ain't no method to my madness. I'm just moving. Okay? Um, we look at this situation out here and we say, okay, well, what can we do to stop this problem? Okay? For one thing, we know that are you for, you know, it's big trouble because of the fact that you worry about them being murdered by each other, but you also murder about, worry about Chicago police, so on and so forth, because you know the police will kill. Y'all do know that. Okay, we know they're notorious. We know Cook County will kill them when they get over there. We know these other prisons or whatever take it to them, so on and so forth. Now, am I saying that every nigga on the street is our brother and sister? I'm not saying that. And I believe in righteous removal. You understand what I'm saying? If it's to protect your family, if it's to protect your family, I believe in defending my family. And you should too. I believe in giving people a chance because of the fact that they are our people by nature. But they're also not moving in a natural way. So I believe in trying to give a person the opportunity to redeem themselves. Like, look, you know, um, you know, this is where we live right here, so on and so forth. You know, I, you know, Mr. Sir, you know, I know you, Big Joe Blow from the block, whatever. You know, I just appreciate if y'all sell what you're selling down that way because of the fact that my babies have to walk in and out of this house. And, you know, they may disagree, so on and so forth, whatever. You give them another chance. Next time, how you doing, sir? You know, it's me again. You know, I asked you a couple days ago, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they might still be disagreeable. Even in American baseball, there's a rule that says three strikes, you're, three, three strikes you're out, right? Now, from then, you understand, and like, you know, you have no respect for our life. You have no respect for my babies. So now, we're thinking in, in a war-type mentality. So then, it's like anything goes. And I'm going to stop right there because of the fact that I'm not going to um, let nobody think I'm saying anything I'm not. But you got to do what it is that you have to do. Because of the fact that my heart hurts when I'm hearing about murders around the country, around the world. You understand what I'm saying? Because of the fact that I'm saying I love my people, but then I'm seeing them dying off. Close to 500 people murdered here in Chicago? That is ridiculous. In any <coughs> country, in any country, it would be a major outcry. Is that right? Yeah. If they said 500 people were murdered in London, England, Obama would get on the news and say, you know, it's a shame what's going on in London. Different countries, different nations have come together. Because that is some total genocide right there. That's a war. Right? You have people shooting up people's funerals. No respect. No respect. 
you have little rappers saying what they want to say. Whatever they want to say, however they want to say. Why? Because they didn't get enough foot up in their ass. Part of my language. Okay, man. I'm 42 years old. I have children. I have grands. Right? I believe in what my grandmother used to say. I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. I believe that. There's no compromising with your children. Okay? Now, there is a time in, in life that you have to become a coach. You don't have to always be hard slave driver, so on and so forth. When you know they can comprehend or whatever, you coach them on in life because you know that those are some of the things that broke us when our parents were too hard on us, right? But we have to come to a point where we're saying, okay, boom, you know, I love you, listen here, blah, 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 I talk to my son. Listen, you know, it's rough out here. I know those girls, whatever. Yeah, I love the girls, cool. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no job, you ain't got no, you ain't no skills. You don't need no babies, right? I'm not taking care of them, you know what I'm saying? That's the business. So we have to become a coach on how it is we're supposed to travel. But we will not continue to allow our children to be murdered. We will not continue to allow, not in this room, not these type of people. Right? The next thing we want to do when we're talking about building a people's army, we talked about family first. We also want to talk about something we call uh, we call uh, the Family Ties Project. You know, um, the name of the organization is the FTP Movement, by the way. What the Family Ties Project is, is this. Oftentimes, we say we have comrades, right? So we say, you know, brother such and such, that's my man, that's my sister, that's blah, blah, blah. But you all never had a meal at each other's homes. You don't even know where you live. Talking about that's my man, that's my sister. So if it's a problem with me, I can't. You can't even find me unless I'm in a lecture hall. What kind of family is that? To me, that's that extended family. That's what I'm saying. Family first. I'm not just talking about who came out the womb. I'm talking about who moved like you move, right? Who's your heir? Like who's your comrade, right? And that's how you tighten the ranks because now I see how you live at the house. Because we confront and we out here, whatever, yeah, I'm vegan, I'm vegetarian, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I don't eat meat, so on and so forth. I go to your house, open up your freezer, pork chops just dropping all on my feet. You know what I'm saying? Chitlins all over the place, man. You know, like, damn, what happened, man? Oh, no, nah, they ain't mine. That's my cousin. She be coming over time to time. You know? And that's cool. I mean, that's, you know, do your thing. What you eat don't make me use the bathroom. Knock yourself out. I ain't into impressing nobody, man. You know? You know, so we, we get together. The one thing we do as far as our organization, at least once a month, we rotate to different members' homes and say, okay, boom, we're going to have a potluck. We're not going to put it all on you. You're going to be cooking for the family anyway, for your own family. So we all come together. We have this potluck. We break bread. We talk. We enjoy each other. You know, a couple people tell us some lies that sound true. It's cool, whatever, you know. And we enjoy ourselves. And we move on. When a little man right here is graduating, it's got to be a big thing. What's your name? Kaylin. Kaylin? Kaylin. I'm going to mess it up. Kaylin. Cool. Okay. Don't worry about it. My man Kay right here. Okay? Cool. Okay, cool. When he's graduating, we making sure that we all go into his graduation so that he can feel like he's a part of a community. Exactly. Right? When sister's sick, we all going to check her out. Right? I don't care which, he graduated from preschool. Man, I don't feel like going to preschool. Come on. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? We're going to preschool graduation. Folks looking at us like, man, you know. They brought the goons with them for <laughs> That's right. Y'all better not say nothing. You better say his name right. That's right. Yeah, we will slap somebody teaching. But anyway. <laughs> but, you know, we, we have to do it like that. You know? Because that's how we work towards building community. We always talk about community. And we talk about being a part of the conscious community. But there is no damn community. Right. If you ask people to define community, it's not that. Right? So that's how you start to build a community. Then we move on from there. Okay, we started with the home. Then we move into our immediate comrades. Then from there, we spread out. Now, how do we, you know, it's a rough world right now. We've got COINTELPRO, counterinsurgency, all that. So how do we reach out and just get everybody? Because everybody yelling, they, they, they black and they proud. You know what I mean? Everybody look good, you know what I'm saying? They got 
you know, the garb on, they fresh dressed like a million bucks. You know, they doing it well, flip-flops flopping, you know what I mean? They got their staff, you know what I mean, the jug of water. They doing it. <laughs> Look real good. Look real good. You can't get a wooden nickel out their pocket, but they good, right? They're not going to help you do nothing. They'll see you and drive right past you and act like they didn't see you when your car break down, right? If they don't need you, you won't hear from them, okay? So that's, I, I wouldn't really consider that conscious, right? So we build from there. So it's different tiers as when we're talking about building the people's army. Y'all still with me? We also, when we talk about building the people's army, we have to slowly begin to wean ourselves off of their system, right? And there's ways of doing it intelligently, not, not just talking that talk, man, because nobody don't want to hear about, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying, I'm, you know, with crack of corn, blah, 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 I'm a boo, boo, boo. Most white folks that are be coming at you, they train every day, and most of you don't. So let's just start with that, okay? If you can't do five push-ups, don't be talking about what a cracker can't do to you. Okay? And that's no disrespect. We deal with reality. You either get what sounds good, you can get what is good. Right? So, with this training, we want to make sure we're eating healthy. Because you can't be sick when, when it's time to go to war, right? You can't, Marcus come, yo, yo, comrade, I need you in Chicago right now, blah, blah, blah. Man, you know I got the flu right now. And they got me surrounded, da, 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 da. Man, you know, man, you know, well, uh, you know, it's that time of the month. Dude, what you talking about? <laughs> you know, we got to get it in order. We got to be healthy as possible. We got to make sure we're eating the right foods, herbs, so on and so forth. For the record, I'm not the type of brother that's going to come try to, try to vegan, vegetarian you to death. I am a vegetarian. But for the most part, I'm for animal rights. That's, that was the first start with it, right? But secondly, it's for my health. And, of course, that's most important, you know. But... You know, so we try to eat as healthy as possible. But we want to make sure, like I said, that we keep our bodies and our minds right. Because most of the healers that we see, because there's a big healing movement within the conscious community as well. And I know a lot of these folks personally are from the East Coast. And many of them are sicker than some of the people that they're bringing in up under their wings. Right? Usually when folks are talking about certain issues, it's things that they need to sharpen up. And that's why they choose them, them, them different avenues. Like with Oprah, back in the day, she used to have every show was about somebody having problems with a relationship. It's because her and Stepman couldn't get it together. Right? But then, you know, her money became that relationship. She cooled down. I talk about some other stuff. You know. Um, now, we talk about building this little cadre. We talk about our family. We talk about, you know, our inner circle. And I'm going to get back to expanding or whatever past that. If something goes down, because we remember Katrina, right? Remember what went on in Haiti. Remember what went on with uh, Hurricane Sandy over here in New York uh, on the East Coast uh, a couple months ago, a month or so ago. And one of the things that we take for granted is communication. We think that Metro PCS is just going to be up whenever we want to call, yo, it's a problem over here. We think that the phone lines, everything going to be cool. You can log on to the Internet. Send somebody a quick Facebook message or announce on Twitter that it's a war going on outside. We know that's not realistic because we don't really think realistic. So how do we communicate? We got to begin to create alternative means of communication. Simple things. You can go get a shortwave radio license in most cities. How many of y'all have a shortwave, shortwave radio license? It's cool, but we're going to look into it, all right? So we, get, we learn how to work shortwave radio. So that way we can communicate between each other, right? In these communities, why is it that the police have the drop on us right now? A couple examples. They organize, definitely. Communicate well with each other. Communicate well with each other. Cameras, surveillance, so on and so forth. How they communicate Radios, where? Radio cars for the most, for, for the most part. <laughs> Why can't we roll like them in the cab service and we have radios inside of our cars so we can make announcements? Yo, check it out. Over here, blah, 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 this is what's going on. 
This is how they do in the Jewish communities. The Hasidic Jews in New York, they have those radio calls. We have to be able to communicate with each other beyond just these telephones. In World War I and II, they had uh, the Japanese was breaking every code that they had. Every code, no matter what they was trying to say, he's breaking them down. What they did was they enlisted some natives, some Native Americans, some natives from this country, called uh, code talkers. And what they did is they had a language, I believe it was a Choctaw. And they, their language was uh, one of the most original languages. And it wasn't even a written language. They were able to, it was hard to understand. But they used that as a way of communicating. And they was able to beat the Japanese just through that type of communication. We have people in our community that have written and, and started their own languages. We have to learn how to communicate. We can't say we're going to be building a people's army. We can't say that we're fighting our enemy and they know every move we make. Every single move. Because we're going to announce it on Facebook. We got a serious rally over here at 2 o'clock with everybody come through. You know what I'm saying? You know, revolution about to start. Nobody else knows nothing about it, just the people that you want to know. Okay? So we have to learn uh, more ways of communicating. Um, we have to be able to take over the quote unquote nine areas of people activity. How are we going to have a movement without no doubt? We don't want incense and oil money, we want million man march money. Right? That's played out, that's corny. Who want to be broke with a field jacket? One of my comrades say, I'm not going to be a broke nigga to fill jacket. Call me when you're ready to get down. We can't keep our lights on. We can't pay the bills when we're talking about waging war. So we got to be able to build economic systems. Now, one of the errors that we made in the past, some of our OGs, our elders, they taught us that capitalism was the enemy, so on and so forth. Right? But we have to come with <laughs> some new rules. We've got to come with some that African scientific socialism. We have to come, we have to say that we don't have to struggle to be a part of the struggle. Okay? I'm not, I'm not in this thing to be broke. That's not my M.O. You know what I'm saying? That is, that's why that's why the state got us hemmed up right now. Because these youngsters out here, they want some money. Back in the 80s, Many of us fell victim to Reaganomics. I know I did. Got out on the block, swinging, so on and so forth. Organizing on that level, right? So we know that we're up against these rappers. We're up against all these different people with, the, with this money. So we got to create some alternative means, OK? One of the things that we're doing that we talk about is starting susus. You all familiar with Susu? Anybody? No. Nobody in the room? In the Susu account, you? You want to speak on it? And that, that's an example. It's a great example. It's different levels of it. You can say the same thing. You might say, okay, boom, um, sister so-and-so, she might not be ready to buy a house yet. She's like, look, you know, my credit jacked up, so on and so forth. I got to pay my rent. So this week, all of us in this room, we're putting in to this one pot. We're putting in $25. Sister's getting all that $25. However, if it's 10 of them, it's $250. So she got that on this Friday. The next Friday, sister's getting the next one. And we just keep on putting in and putting in and putting in. That's what a lot of our West African brothers and sisters do. That's what a lot of the Asians do because of the fact that they want to keep that money circulating. And that's how you're supporting each other. And we're not worried about, well, what if such and such don't put in? But we know where such and such lives. So she's going to put in. <laughs> right? He'll be putting in. Don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, he'll get put in the pot. <laughs> so, so we start a SUSU account, right? Um, we also have buyer's clubs. 
You know, if we're not doing a food co-op, most of us, we're eating the same. Um, if we're not eating the same, that's cool. Most of us use toilet paper. So we all buy, buy toilet paper together wholesale, and we put in this money on that. You know what I'm saying? We all going to use toothpaste. Put in on a toothpaste. You know? Certain things, vegetables, whatever. Speaking of vegetables, went to urban agriculture. I just started my first garden this past uh, spring. I was out there like Farmer Brown or whatever, feeling real good, playing with some manure and everything. It was, you know, I don't really like getting dirty, but she looking like, you eat vegetables, go ahead. So, you know, but it, it was cool because of the fact that we talk about red, black, and green, and we talking about freeing the land, we wouldn't even know how to work the land. Okay? So if you don't know how to work the land, what you going to do with it? Just look at it when you get it? <laughs> so we got to learn how to plant. We got to teach our babies how to plant. We got to teach them that fast food is fruits and vegetables, not McDonald's. We got to teach them that it comes from the earth, not from jewels. You understand what I'm saying? So we want to begin to make sure the green in the red, black, and green is about agriculture, right? One of the brothers on the, on the East Coast says there ain't no culture without agriculture, okay? So we want to, um, I got time on? Yeah. Okay, I know, I told y'all market's dangerous or whatever. Market's give me the, the eye, that means, <laughs> you know. So we deal with the agriculture as well. So we're talking about building people's army. What did we discuss? We discussed uh, education, independent education, homeschooling, right? We discuss security. We have to train. We got to train physically. You know, we got to learn how to use these weapons. You know what I'm saying? We can't be afraid to utilize weapons. Now, I know the gun laws are strict over here in Chicago. I learned that. Um, chairman told me about that a few years ago. You know what I'm saying? The gun laws are kind of strict. But I live in Atlanta. And the crackers in Georgia, you ain't messing with their weapons. So we cool. You can buy weapons over there. You know what I'm saying? We start gun clubs. You gotta be able to start a black gun club. All that's legal. You know what I'm saying? How's the range out here? They they, they let y'all. I mean, you can go to the range out here. Okay, go to the range. Learn how to shoot. You can't be talking about you know we go to war. I'm gonna do this and that. You don't even know how to clean your weapon. You don't even know how to break it down. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know how to break these weapons down in the dark. The knives, machetes, learn how to work them. We're talking about building people's army. You might can't buy guns. So I'm not going to force you up under the, you know what I'm saying, get you in no jam. But go to Walmart, pick you some machetes up. Get some hammers. You know what I mean? Get some of them blades that you can use. Because if we go down, man, you want to you wanna be ready, right? I know you got some knives. You look like you got a couple right now. Sister right here, she, I, I'm watching her. She had her joint, her joint the whole time. I'm cool, right? <laughs> okay, good. You know, but you want to make sure that you begin to arm yourself. We say ATM means arm the masses, right? Now, does that mean that I'm saying go out there and commit some type of crime? No, I'm not saying that. That's ridiculous. I'm saying be able to defend what is yours. If you don't have an army to defend what it is you have, you don't have nothing. You don't have nothing. And that's the bottom line. These babies, they have to learn how to, how to fight at an early age. Because if it goes down, I want to know that my eight-year-old is going to give you the business like I would. Hit that vital point. You know when, when a certain cold word is bust out, man, all bets are off. You, you, you little Chucky now, wild out. Stab everything that you don't know. Everybody, cut them. We're talking some serious stuff right now. We're talking about we're at war inside of the camps, right? We're behind enemy line right now, so we're talking about we're at war. And we're talking about how we're going to deal with it. We start realistic. On a political level, and I'm still talking about the People's Army, on a political level, we say, what, uh, what are we going to do about these electoral politics? Now, on a national level, when it comes to uh, Obama, Osama, whoever, we don't care nothing about that. Because we know that they already got their plan for that, and they're going to move accordingly 
that's already scripted, right? We know Obama's the greatest, the, the nation of Islam used to say that uh, the greatest trick the devil ever proved. Um, help me out here. Exactly. Thank you. I know you know it. <laughs> right now, the greatest trick the devil played was to make you think that a charismatic black man who walked through Chicago was not the devil. What we did was participate in democratic fascism. Okay? You willingly voted this dude in because he looked like you, because his wife was black, because he had black children. You understand what I'm saying? And because he could play basketball and he smoked cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? He go to the burger joints. He, he, he do some Al Green dancing. He drink beer. You know, so we got emotional once again. Once again, we let these crackers play on our emotions. They got a puppet, they put him up, and we loved it. So much so that many of the folks that are in the quote unquote movement lost their damn mind. It was so many debates on whether Obama was good for America or not. Anything good for America is bad for us, so who gives a damn? Whenever America's winning, we losing. That's it, point blank period, end of discussion. On a local level. We need State Representative Aaron Patterson, right? We need the aldermans. I need, Marcus needs to say, look, man, you know, um, we want to do a block party for the school or whatever. We need to call sister so-and-so to sign off on this paper so we can get it done. We need these street lights over here so these babies would be correct. So we are for organizing on a local level, right? We are for starting our own political parties. A political club. Does that mean we, we're taking oath with them or whatever? No, we already know our agenda. We place our people where we need to place them. Now some organizations, they allow their members to join the police station, the police departments and all that. I'm not saying go that far. That just ain't me. If you're all able to stomach it, knock yourself out. We don't like police and we're not going to stop and say, well, are you down for the people or whatever? You know, a pig is a pig. When we say we don't eat pork, it's not, we don't eat white pigs, we don't eat no pigs. You understand what I'm saying? So we want to deal with, uh, on a local level, we want to have some type of power. Okay? I know that that's an illusion when it comes to being powerful in America, whatever, so on and so forth, but we have to be able to move like chess. We've got to be able to make some moves. I'm going to wrap up in a few seconds, y'all. Hope I'm not beating y'all to death. We talked a little bit about political education. And we talked a little bit about protocol. You know, we have a lot of organizations out here these days that are just pretty much fashionably militant. You know what I'm saying? You know, they look the part. You know, they got a lot of empty rhetoric but they have no plans of action. No plans. We have to be able to say, okay, if Marcus Klein is the best person to educate our babies, we send our babies to Marcus Klein. Not, well, I don't like the way he dressed, and I heard he said such and such. That's ego. Do you want to win or do you want to look good losing? Because most of us are always looking good losing. You know what I'm saying? I used to say the niggas don't want to be free. They want to, you know, they want to look good. And that's what's going on with a lot of these charismatic leaders. The so-called liberation movement has become the latest religion. Right? You hoop, you holler, you get on YouTube, you scream, you cuss somebody out, yell black power, say I'm the prince of pan-Africanism, get some money and go home. How the hell can you be on a throne when we're at war? You on the throne looking good. Your ego now placed you up on the damn throne. Meanwhile, we still getting murdered in the hood, right? right. We still getting locked up in the hood. But you royalty. It's good, man. What, what chairman say? Um, being oppressed is embarrassing. <laughs> 
It's embarrassing being a pressure. You got you want to look like you better. You want to be what what, what do you say the the um uh the slave with the biggest chains and whips, huh? The flyest chains. So we want to look good. Yeah, I'll be that royalty, and we're gonna be the threat to the throne. Cause we come in with with some of these babies that's, that's that's being slaughtered. We come with some of these brothers and sisters that's being locked up. Brother Marcus and I was talking before we before um you all came in. And one of the things we talked about is the fact that there was folks who were here before we came on the scene. We know who they are. There's folks that put in way more work than us, and I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna get cocky for a second. I think we did it, we've done we've done a little bit. We've done a little bit. Because we put our lives into this. When you put your soul into something that's different. You understand what I'm saying? So this is all we got. Marcus can't run away and talk about I ain't into this no more. We come looking for him. Because yeah. <laughs> cause we you you already man, I ain't even gonna repeat some of the stuff you did because of the fact that somebody might not know it and you be like, man, look here, man. <laughs> you gotta flip the boot lid today. But when we put our soul into something, man, we have a vested interest in it, right? A lot of these folks, they're here for a season. You might not have heard of them three, five years ago. I'm not saying you heard of me, but you can go to someone and check the track record, right? If your whole bio and your profile is just on YouTube, then it don't mean nothing because we was doing this before the internet was popular. You understand what I'm saying? You can't call yourself no revolutionary just because you, you read revolutionary books or you write about revolutionary books or you write revolutionary don't mean you revolutionary, man. That means it sound good, right? Just because you got 400,000 hits on YouTube, that don't mean you nothing. It's cats right here in Chicago. I'm looking for them in the audience right now. I don't see them on YouTube. I see them all the time. Y'all running things. But you can't find them in the community, right? Who cares about your polygynous relationship? Who cares about that? What's practical? What's practical? What do we have to offer the whole? When you talk about building the people's army, it goes beyond just your selfish ego. It goes beyond your individualism. It's a part of this whole here. And if it's not about the whole, then it ain't about nothing. Listen, man. Um, I appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to me. I want to hear what Marcus got to say. Um, <laughs> I want to say, this is my book right here, How to Build a People's Army. I'm going to give a quick disclaimer. I kind of um, shot a little bit off of it. This right here, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, my publisher, we had ordered some books from him on the way out. And I checked them out, and I realized that he had, he also did our editing. And he sent us the wrong version, so there's some typos. So if you pick it up, I just want y'all to know that I can spell. <laughs> and that, um, that typo is too. We still buy that. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm glad you said, you know, some people, you know, yeah. he said there instead of there. You know, so um, <laughs> y'all get cute sometimes. You know how we do this thing. Oh, yeah. But if you do cop the book, they're $10, and I'm going to give you a free CD today. We have um, uh, some hip-hop CDs in the back. Um, one is a double CD, Food, Clothes, and Shelter. The pictures on them are actual pictures of folks who work with us. Um, again, we have a film coming out. I want to give you all, all the flyer. It's called Organizing is the New Cool. It's footage we've had. Uh, we've been taping since 2007. You know, it has all the information on this. You go check out the trailer and so on and so forth. I really, really, really appreciate you all listening to me. I hope I made some kind of sense and that some kind of value, that you had some kind of value from something I said. And, um, you know, that's it. Anybody have any questions or whatever before I move on? Comments, hate mail. Do yes, you want to estimate the time when the movie, uh, the documentary is coming out? The, oh, yes. It'll be out um, in April. April. Yes. Yes, it'll be out in April. I just want to say I appreciate you talking about the uh, military treatment and the relationship to our brothers and brothers and then yes. the military and put our queens involved in, you know, for, for, for the weapon in their hand, they can get the feel of it and learn how to shoot the weapon at the first target. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. As far as organization, our organization, FTP movement, we're in seven cities. And um, we have more female leadership than males. And the sisters have been with us throughout the test of time because sometimes, you know, 
brothers, you know, we, you know, like I said, we, we ego driven. You know what I mean? And we all have egos because we're human beings. But it's either you control the ego or the ego controls you. As soon as you say something that somebody don't like, you know, you know, well, blah, he think he blah, blah, blah. I, I am such and such grand, great grandson and blah, blah, blah. Who gives a damn about that? Just because you're from the same bloodline don't mean you're the same pedigree. You understand what I'm saying? So the thing is, we, we, we got to be, um, we got to be uh, uh, accepted to those who are in better positions than us, and what, no matter what it is. Marcus is a better educator than me, period, okay? Does that mean he's smarter than me? No, he got an IQ low as hell. He just remembers nothing. <laughs>